Hi guys, I'm going to be talking about the backbone and the ribs a bit because in the Quran we have a claim and I understand that to be that a creator God uses a liquid to create human beings and that this liquid originates between the backbone and the ribs. Now to clear this up, I will use a structure where I do five things. First, I see what it really says and then I try and understand where this idea could come from. I compare this with reality. Then I look at what Islamic apologists are trying to do with this and I provide a conclusion. So what are we talking about? Well, it's in the Quran chapter 86 and it's sentences 5, 6 and 7, where I will be mostly focusing on sentence number 7. So it's let a man observe from what he was created. He was created from a fluid, ejected, emerging from between the backbone and the ribs. Okay, so you know, this, this tells us that we must believe that we were handcrafted by a creator God using water, the, the, the ma. The modern explanation mentions a scientifically accurate term, germ cells. Does the Quran use this term? No, of course not. Don't be silly. It mentions a fluid or water, the ma'in. Can anything be created from a liquid? Well, not that I'm aware of. So what this liquid, the water, what, what it does is, is it's ejected and then emerges. <laughs> well, for me, that's repeating the same thing. Where is this? From the backbone? What is backbone? I mean, I would call it spine and scientifically accurate would be the vertebral column, the series of bones from the head to the pelvis. So using the word backbone already puts doubt into my mind that this actually is a scientifically accurate text. But now what else is claimed in sentence number seven? Well, that it's emerging from between this backbone and the ribs. And these are some of the translations all agreeing with this. And you can see there's quite a few that Islam Awakened have come up with what they've collected. And that they all agree on this one idea the liquid originates from somewhere between the spine and the rib cage. So looking at this the sentence from the Quran word by word, we get that it is coming forth from between the backbone, again this this word, and the ribs. And the what is coming forth is this liquid, this fluid. Okay, so the translator here agrees with what the general consensus seems to be. A fluid that is used to create humans is emitted somewhere between the backbone and the ribs. Now, some translators, as we've seen, use loins instead of backbone because they are closer to the testicles, I reckon. But this does not make it any more correct or less wrong. And I'm going to explain this a bit. So what is the story with this fluid or liquid? Now in other videos I've pointed out that nothing can be created from H2O, water. If I take the ma, the, the water, metaphorically, I have just a liquid, something that I think is quite simply something visible to the naked eye that the desert nomads in the 7th century in the Arabian Peninsula could see and figure out that this liquid could be linked to a human becoming pregnant. Okay, that's my opinion. But what do the theologians say, the Islam scholars? Well, they say that emanating from between the loins and the ribs, followed by a lengthy explanation from a medical book, which actually contradicts what the Quran says, and thereby involuntarily pointing out a mistake in the Quran. Another scholar also goes the way of quoting a medical text that has no bearing on anything in the Quran. Simply going by, well, both texts mention something liquid, so they must be talking about the same thing. And bingo, Quran is correct. Okay, that the medical text is referring to something completely different, where the liquid mentioned has no direct effect on reproduction or anything, is somehow irrelevant. Is this honest? <laughs> okay. On the other hand, we have someone like Ibn Kathir, who says, Created from water gushing forth, meaning a sexual fluid that comes out bursting forth from the man and the woman. Okay. Hmm. Thus, the child is produced from both of them by the permission of Allah. Well, 
<laughs> he's on the right track there, but somehow very wrong. And he also says proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, meaning the backbone, and this is quite funny, or loins. And so he's also going in the direction of the loins of the man and the ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Okay. Shabib bin Bisha reported from Ikrima, who narrated from Ibn Abbas, said that proceeding from between the backbone and ribs, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. It, the fluid, is yellow and fine in texture. The child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. their sexual fluids. Now, Ibn Kathir seems to pick up on this, this idea in, in, in the sentence referring to male and female parts and then expands it. Now, I don't know what the female ejaculate or sexual fluid is. And out of all these scholars and professional translators, we have one okay, of, of the many translators who even dares put this idea of male and female ownership in there. The, the loins in, and then in brackets of man and the pelvic arch of woman. But as he does not really see it in the text, he adds square brackets to signify this is a personal interpretation. Now, is this in any way in compliance with the claim the classical works of Quranic commentary throughout the last 1400 years confirm this view categorically? No, this claim is pretty ridiculous since I've never heard about bones producing a yellow fluid and one required in reproduction on top of it. This is ludicrous, come on. I could laugh at this, but it's actually quite sad that we have to deal with such outlandish and really ridiculous claims, like a sexual fluid. This is crazy. Another commentator simply claims that the Quran is clear, but that science has not yet been able to confirm the claims made in the Quran. <laughs> really? Oh boy, this is so weird. It seems that even the Islamic scholars all disagree with each other and, and seem to have like different interpretations and ideas, which somehow makes the Quran not so clear, not that well explained, and unlike the claim in chapter 2, sentence 2, well worth doubting. Anyway, looking at the bigger picture, I think I can safely summarize this claim in the Quran is humans are created by a supernatural entity using a liquid originating between the spine and the ribs. And I think this is what it boils down to. I think this is the, the message that is, is, is being conveyed here. This is the, the claim that is being made. Now, today we know this is not the case, okay? So, but then what is interesting, where could this faulty idea come from? Well, in my opinion, it's most likely a leftover from ancient Greek philosophers who thought that people are created in the brain of a man. And then this is transported down into the kidneys and all over the body with different liquids. And, and then, you know, even this idea that there is a homunculus, a, a tiny human finished and ready, shooting out of the penis to be nourished by the woman growing inside her. Really, they had all these funny ideas. Now Galen, um, who's you know very well known, um, he writes and he quotes Plato and Dioclus in Definitiones Medicae in volume 19, semen, as Plato and Dioclus opine, is discharged by the brain and the spinal marrow, while Praxagoras and Democritus and thereafter Hippocrates maintain it comes from the whole body. And then Alessandro Benedetti writes in, in his book 2, uh, chapter 16, on the renibus, in other words, on the kidneys, from these kidneys, the genital semen is generated in large part. And then for many centuries, it was this opinion that, you know, the, the, the human fluids, and, and this was in ancient medicine for a long time, they agree on the provenance of semen from near the spine or near the kidneys. And this is then attributed to Galen. And it was only in the 16th century, like, you know, just 500 years ago, that Leonardo da Vinci gave us some more accurate drawings and some, you know, basic understanding of what was actually happening in the real world. Albeit with things like a penis that connected to the spinal cord. So today, you know, like the 21st century with, with the internet and all other forms of information distribution, we know this is nonsense. And that's why modern Islamic apologists today will admit that the Quran does not claim that humans are created from a liquid emanating from between the backbone and the ribs to be ejaculated. No. But 
There are dishonest apologists and they will try different tactics. And this is what I've seen. They make this about partly men, partly women, to be understood metaphorically, a nerve reflex in the spinal cord, which then makes it correct to, well, it doesn't. It's not correct to say that a nerve reflex in the spinal cord is the, um, the trigger for the ejaculation of the liquid in between the, um, you know, the, the backbone and the ribs. Or they refer to an embryonic stage or refer to the aorta. In other words, it's not scientific and not precise. And there are some who will stubbornly refuse reality and will still today claim that the Quran is accurate the way it is written. They will even claim it is scientifically accurate and that it is confirmed. Is this really the case? Come on, where in the real world is there any water involved? What is this sexual fluid? Where is there any yellow liquid emanating from a woman's ribs? <laughs> and where is this yellow liquid gushing from the woman required for fertilization? What is the process of producing or creating a child? The Quran doesn't say. And what role does the chest of the female take in reproduction? And what role does the backbone of the male take in reproduction? And what is required to start the process of a human? And where is semen produced? Where is sperm produced? All these open questions, all these, these words that are being chucked around without ever having any kind of substance, any kind of real explanation attached to them. Okay, now... This is a see-through human body, all right, where we can locate the different components quite easily today in the 21st century. If we take the spine, the vertical column or vertebral column, and then we add the rib cage, this is what we get, backbone and ribs, okay? Now, this is where everything is positioned and when applying the correct ratio of the different components and their relative sizes, this is what it looks like. Now, hang on, we, we first need to clarify something else, like, like a side note, just for completeness sake. What about this semen, this more fluid, this more gooey and sticky component? It's not really a fluid, it's not like water. It consists of different types of fluids generated in the seminal vesicles, the prostate, the bulb, the urethral glands, all the, they're all located below the bladder anyway. Now, just to be, it's be precise, in the real world, world we, we require a germ cell from the male, one from the female, the fusion of both, and the resulting zygote. All right, now this is what we need to get embryonic development going, and that's all. If one of these is missing, no embryo, no fetus, no baby, no nothing. Now, semen, or the seminal fluid, is merely a transport device. It can contain spermatozoa, in other words, the, the male germ cell, or not. So it is not useful or essential in the reproduction process itself. You can drown the female ovum in liters of semen and nothing will happen if this does not contain at least one active sperm cell. So semen, this, this more liquidy, fluidy thing, without sperm is in and of itself pretty much useless. An Islam apologist saying that, you know, the semen is produced here at location X, this is a straw man. A red herring, it's useless. As a result, we need to focus only on sperm, the single cell. Okay, so now this, this germ cell, which as we've just seen is essential, is produced and secreted by the gonads, inside the body in females, outside the body in males. So in a male, it is only the one single sperm, a tiny cell and not the more liquid semen that is responsible. Okay, so that's what we've just seen. So Let's take a look where that comes from. Now, if we look, this is like if we pretend this is a see-through body, the area we're talking about is located lower down, just underneath the torso. So let me change to a different picture, which should make this more clear. This is the rib cage, and this is where the sperm is produced. And again, different picture. This is the rib cage. This is where the testicles are. Ribs, spine, testes. Now, are the ribs anywhere near the testicles? 
Okay, let me make it. It doesn't matter which example of a male body I use. The result is always the same. The ribs are nowhere near the testicles. The gonad producing the sperm required to fertilize the female ovum to get a new life started are always in a male underneath the torso. Now, if we go a little bit closer to make this even more clear, and I, I don't know if I really need to do this, but, you know, just, just to go through everything. In this diagram, the anus is above the testes, okay? Are your ribs anywhere near the anus? Not in my body they aren't. And this is the question you need to ask. Is really, the, the, the testicles are below the anus. How can the ribs be anywhere near the anus? How can you go and say anything between this is the area? This is ludicrous. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's closer to the knees than the ribs, if anything. And then, okay, here's the bigger picture again. A man standing, showing all the proportions, indicating that sperm is produced way below the ribs. But what can we find the backbone and the ribs? Well, it's just a lot of hot air, that's for sure. It's where the heart and the lungs could be said to be located as organs between the backbone and the ribs but never anything to do with the reproductive organs in a man, let alone a woman. So, now that we have analyzed the claim of the Quran and compared it to reality, do we see any kind of match, any equivalency, any resemblance? Well, Islam apologists do. Well, they don't agree with each other, what we've just seen, but they do their best and come up with a remarkable amount of creativity to rescue the text to help make their God somehow make sense, some, somehow. And like, here's Islam Q&A. The meaning of the verses, five to seven, a liquid coming out of region between the back as we mentioned, that normally those words were used because the germ cells of the male and the female are located there. It does not state where exactly it emerges from. So it uses germ cells, which is scientifically correct, but the rest is not. Because the, the germ cells are not located between the backbone and the ribs, as we've just seen. So, are germ cells liquid? No. Are they located there? No. So, wrong on both terms here. Another apologist claims that the above-mentioned physiological mechanism of ejaculation is that, ah, this is what I said before. So, this is a guy who says that the nerve impulses are discharged from the lumbar and sacral segments of the spinal cord that lie within the first two lumbar vertebrae, which are below the 12th region. A whole lot of mumbo-jumbo saying exactly sweet nothing. But what he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't realize, he's actually contradicting the Quran because he says this is the lower lumbar vertebrae, which are close to the anus, and the ribs are nowhere near that. <laughs> then a guy called Jamal Badawi assumes that gushing fluid poured, poured forth refers to the aorta, which, according to a book cited by him, Clinical Anatomy, supplies the testes and ovaries with the necessary nutrients. And this is what the Quran refers to. <laughs> this, is, this shows the desperation, I think. Does the Quran say blood is used to create a human being? Well, actually, yes, it does as a blood clot, but not involving the aorta. So, I, I don't know. Okay, if you want to go further, Wiki Islam has an excellent collection of different attempts by apologists trying to make things better. And the, the worst probably being by a medical doctor called Zakir Naik. <laughs> <laughs> who claims that this is correct during the embryo stage, where I don't see sperm being produced by a female embryo at any stage. But he says this is correct because at some stage, this everything, well, then everything is somewhere. And um, excuse me, as a medical doctor, you, Dr. Zakir Naik, I'm a medical doctor, you should know that the, that the embryo and the fetus are never in between the backbone and the ribs. So this is also wrong. And a creative and highly dishonest version, um, which is actually the, the trigger for me digging out this, this old script that I had lying in the drawer, is used by a, by a guy called Nadia Ahmed, okay, who in a recent debate uh, took a part of a drawing. Um, and this is during the debate, really. And, and this is, apostate prophet was, was there and he made a good case. And then Nadia Ahmed pulls out this, this drawing 
He puts it on its side. He zooms in and simply asserts that everything is exactly where the Quran says it is. And there is no higher level of deception I have come across. This is, this is so, it's amazingly deceptive. It's amazingly dishonest. How somebody can, can really do everything to, to go and, and fool other people instead of just being honest and saying, yeah, okay, look, this is an old book. They didn't really know what they were talking about and that's it. No way. He still has to go and make it look as though it's accurate by, by changing the direction and, and zooming in and not showing this, this. Okay, it beats me. I, I don't know. Islam is said to give you moral standards, and, 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 but this is the, exactly the opposite. Okay, some apologists simply claim that the coccyx, coccyx sorry, is also part of the spine and somehow manage to convince themselves that this is making the sentences in the Quran more correct. Why they think this is beyond me? As, you know, the fact that these people seem to go for an explanation that puts everything as low down as possible in the body achieves nothing since it is still wrong. Don't these people understand that they are making the Quran even more silly than it already is? Along with their, with their God they make out to be an incompetent buffoon. Don't they realize this? Now, if a God, an all-knowing God, had written this, it would have been terribly easy to say, we need two parts, one from the male generated in the sac between the thighs and one part from the female generated inside the body in specialized organs, and when these two meet, when having sex, they fuse and create the new human. That's easy, concise, correct. But launching into a quiz, looking for a liquid in the upper chest region that produces babies, is simply stupid and wrong. So my summary is, there's a lot of speculation here, as well as brain acrobatics and, and everybody disagrees with each other. Nobody really comes to one concise and, and one, uh, you know, one opinion where everybody agrees, yes, this is the, the way this is to be understood. And there's a multitude of resulting interpretations, and most of them dishonest on top of it. We know there is no description of embryology in the Quran, but it's divine creation. The propagation of words associated with embryology in real life does not in any way validate the allegorical or metaphorical meaning in the Quran, which uses outdated, vague and ambiguous wording when describing anything relating to this topic. So, when comparing the claims with reality, the Quran is clearly wrong and this poses yet another mistake. That's the way it is. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you for listening. Until the next time. Cheers.